Today is the fifth Sunday after Epiphany, the seasons of the se- or the Sundays after Epiphany often have that uh, theme of the teaching of Christ for the life of the Christian. And here today we will hear Jesus tell us that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Our opening hymn is number 919, Blessed Jesus at Your Word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. 
He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your one and only Son as the word of life for our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Help us believe what the scriptures proclaim about him and do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and the children's choir will sing, Speak, O Lord.
first reading is from the 19th chapter of Exodus. On the first day of the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on that very day they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation." These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, We will do everything the Lord has said. The word of the Lord. We sing Psalm 112. The second reading is from the second chapter of 1 Peter. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. The word of the Lord. Please rise.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord. You may be seated. The hymn of the day is number 630, Thy Strong Word.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, light and salt of the earth. How is this for a motivational speech? Listen here, bud, and listen up good. It's high time for you to straighten up, get busy, get serious. Report cards come out in two weeks, so get on it. That was one of my teacher's motivational speech to our class, and especially directed at one student, one of my classmates. And that student struggled, and to tell the truth, we all struggled, the teacher included. We all struggled that year. We needed encouragement. I'm not sure that that was it. Now listen to Jesus and what he says. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Listen to Peter, who says, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, God's special possession, chosen that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. That tone is quite different, isn't it? Instead of saying, you should shape up, you should be better, both Jesus and Peter say, you are. You are salt, you are light, you are God's chosen people, his special possession. The difference is that Jesus kept in mind what he was doing for his people. He was shining his light on them and then calling them the light of the world. He was going forward with the task of bearing the sins of the world, exchanging the sins of humanity for his righteousness. So he calls his people salt and light. God spoke that way in the Old Testament, too. There's a slight difference, and we'll talk about that. But in Exodus chapter 19, Israel had left Egypt about three months earlier, and what a busy three months it was. It was three months of complaining. Moses, we're dying of thirst out here in the desert. What are you going to do about it? And so God told Moses, this is what you do. You throw this branch in the pond. The bitter waters will be made sweet. Strike the rock and water will pour out enough for everyone. And then the people complained again, Moses, we're starving out here in the desert. What are you going to do about it? And God told Moses, have the people go out in the morning. They can collect bread from heaven, manna. And so they did, and after a while they said, Moses, we're sick and tired of this manna day after day. It's always the same thing. And God told Moses, okay, 
We'll continue with the manna, but we will give the people meat in the evening, quail. Flocks of birds will fly low, and you can reach out and catch them. And then on the way to the promised land, well, there were some enemies that did not want Israel to pass through, and God supported his people, strengthened his people, and gave them the victory. And then God had Moses tell the people, you saw what I did to Egypt, how I carried you on eagle's wings. If you obey me fully and keep my covenant out of all the nations, you will be my treasured possession. The difference between that and what we heard from Peter is that this has something that sounds like a condition. If you obey me fully, we know from Israel's history that they did not obey God fully. Yes, there were all the complaints that we heard about already. And then after the time of Moses, after the time of Joshua, there was the time of the judges. People have called that Israel's Wild West era. There was no king in Israel, and everybody did as he saw fit. Horrible stories in the book of Judges, things that people did. But God raised up the judges, leaders, warriors, prophets, who led and taught the people. And then there was the time of King David and Solomon, and after that, Israel split. The northern tribes forgot God completely. The southern tribes well, they were sort of faithful. Can you be sort of faithful? Once in a while, they would have a good king who would lead the people, and then they would have a king who led the people in the worship of false gods, who made treaties with the neighbors and relied on them for strength, something God told them not to do. Through all of that, God remained faithful. He still considered them his people. Sometimes he let them see the consequences of their actions, sometimes very harsh consequences, but he remained faithful to them. He brought them back. He continued to bless because he made a promise long, long before to Abraham. Through your descendants, all nations on the earth will be blessed. Later, he made a promise to King David. I will raise up from your family a descendant who will be king forever and rule on your throne forever. And with Jesus, we have fulfillment. That's what our Christmas celebrations are all about. The fullness of time had come, and God sent his only son. As we look forward to Lent and the, the theme of Christ's passion in Lent, that is fulfillment of what the prophets had talked about, what the Savior would be like and what he would do. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The punishment to bring us peace was upon him. God was faithful. Jesus was faithful. Despite humanity's unfaithfulness, despite humanity's cruelty to him, he remained faithful. 
Jesus spoke to his disciples. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Jesus knew his disciples would have their ups and downs, their times of faithfulness and their times of wavering. Think of Peter. Around that Passover table, he boasted and said, Lord, if everybody forsakes you, I never will. And he denied Jesus. When asked, he said, I don't know who you're talking about. All the others deserted Jesus and fled in all directions. When Jesus was going through his darkest time, Before all of that, still, Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Jesus knew what he was doing for them. He knew the work that he was doing and would continue to be doing in them. At the end of today's gospel reading, Jesus said, Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. The righteousness of Jesus covers our sin. That's justification. We are judged as righteous not because we are, but because we have the righteousness of Jesus given to us by Jesus himself. And that righteousness of Jesus also empowers us for righteousness, empowers us to be the salt and light of the world. That's sanctification. That's the work that God does in us. When we hear the word, believe it, and strive to live it, that's God's kingdom coming to our hearts. Jesus does his work within us. And so that's what he means when he says, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, you and I don't have a righteousness that surpasses anything, and neither did Peter, and neither did the people of Israel, except for the righteousness of Jesus given to us. We are clothed with the righteousness of Jesus before the Heavenly Father and before the world. Empowered by Him, we are salt and light. And Jesus wants us to continue to be what He has made us. He wants us to continue to follow Him in love, in obedience and righteousness. That's why He warns. If the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? What is it good for? If the lamp is put under a bowl, what is it good for? What happens when Christians go with the flow of the rest of the world? What happens when Christians react to a change or a disappointment with anger, with harshness, with retaliation? Oh, then the salt loses its saltiness. What happens when Christians let their knowledge of Christ get shallow? And our faith becomes weak. 
and our discipleship becomes less about following Christ and more about what we like, what fits our agenda, what pleases or entertains us, then the salt loses its saltiness, the light flickers. I think of the political climate in our country, how people react rather than respond, how people speak their mind rather than listen, seek to understand, Things are just so polarized. I think of the last three years, the whole COVID thing and how everybody reacted, had knee-jerk reactions, responded and reacted with anger. Yeah, me too. Then we cease to be salt and light. Let your light shine. Let love shine. Let concern and care shine. And obedience to our Heavenly Father's commands. Let that shine. Because the summary of the law is love. We have it from Jesus himself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Those commands of God will not pass away even to the end. We are to follow his law as our guide and as our guide in living in love. Our lives are to be our witness along with our words. You are the salt and light in the world. Salt was once the only chemical preservative for food that was available. And Jesus gives us salt. Jesus gives us his word and faith that believes it, and that preserves us. And Jesus tells us to be the salt of the earth that we are to make a difference in the people and in the world around us. Jesus tells us to be the light of the world. I think you know what it's like to walk in the darkness. You stumble around in the night, hit your shin on a low table, maybe walk into a door that was left open. You got little kids around the house, you step on a Lego. Those are the worst. You can't see the dangers that are there. And we look at what we see in the news. We see people in the world walking in darkness. Just in the last month, two shootings because of anger, suspicion, All kinds of hate thrown back and forth by people speaking their minds, not speaking in love and not speaking the truth in love. But you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world because Jesus has given you his word and he has given you faith. That is your salt. He has shined his love on you. That is your light so that you can reflect his light. In Jesus Christ, you are a chosen people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, God's special possession. Declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen. Please rise. We turn to page 11 in the worship folder. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayer of the church. Lord, you bless those who fear you. Send your Holy Spirit to open our hearts to your word, that we fear, love, and trust you above all things. Clothe your servants with your righteousness. Let your faithful people sing for joy. Empower us to shine as lights in this dark world, that your love may flow through us to your glory and for our neighbor's good. Clothe your servants with your righteousness. Let your faithful people sing for joy. Call the people in darkness to your marvelous light, just as you have called us. Move us to witness with our words and actions that we may glorify you before those who do not know you and draw them to you. Clothe your servants with your righteousness. Let your faithful people sing for joy. Let the word of your love reflect in all we do our duties in the home, school, work, and society, that your name may be hallowed as we do our best, living as your chosen people, your holy royal priesthood, your holy nation. Clothe your servants with your righteousness. Let your faithful people sing for joy. Lead and support the people who volunteer in our congregation, those who serve on councils, boards, committees, and support organizations, Feed their faith with your word, strengthen them for service, and make them a blessing for your people and for your work. Clothe your servants with your righteousness. Let your faithful people sing for joy. In mercy, look on those who suffer in mind or body, and lift them up with the wings of your mercy. Give comfort, healing, and patience as it fits your good and gracious will. Clothe your servants with your righteousness. Let your faithful people sing for joy. Listen, Lord, to the thoughts and cares of our hearts. Glorious Father, you created all. Lord Jesus Christ, you paid the ransom for your people. Holy Spirit, you are our comforter and our power. Bless and shield us from all trouble. Watch over us now and always, and bring us at last to your glory, where you live and reign, now and forever. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, gifts of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with hymn 770, God of grace and God of glory.
Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. May be seated for the closing hymn. We thank our children's choir and our handbells for edifying and beautifying our worship today. Also, today is the first Sunday of the month, and so that means coffee fellowship. We hope we see many of you downstairs today. Uh, coffee fellowship is served by Sunday school this month. Last week, or last Sunday at our annual meeting, we also had a call meeting, again extending a call for a second grade teacher as Ms. Geiger is retiring. We called Amy Helwig from Port Orange, Florida. She is helping at a preschool at this time, and she writes to us, Dear members of St. Stephen's Lutheran Church and School, I have received the divine call you have extended me to teach second grade, assist with children's choir, and coach forensics. I am in complete awe of the Holy Spirit's guidance for leading you to call me. I have been and will continue to prayerfully deliberate these two calls I have, serving at Small Steps Academy at Port Orange, Florida, 
and St. Stephen's Lutheran School in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. It is my request of you, members of St. Stephen's, to pray for me, pray to lead me to serve the Lord to the best of my ability as he sees fit. Jesus invited them, saying, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. From Luke 18. Serving for him, Amy Helwig. Also remember in your prayers, Pastor and Mrs. Dorn, both of them have calls to serve at Emmanuel in New London. So pray that the God leads them to serve where they are most needed. God's blessings on your week.